Welcome to Publishing Smarter's video tutorial series on working with DITA using the 2017 release of Adobe FrameMaker. Our second tutorial shows you the basics of working with structured documents and identifying elements and their relationships with each other. We're going to keep working on the file we created in the last tutorial. We'll use our preferred workspace with the Element Catalog and Structure view showing. We've saved it as DITA Author, and if you want to see how to set it up, watch our first tutorial video. First, let's make sure we don't overwrite our original document. We'll save our file to a new location by selecting File Save As from the menu. In the Save dialog, you can navigate through folders and even create new folders. As shown in our first video, we created a folder on the C drive, named it Tutorials, and created a subfolder for Adobe FrameMaker 2017. Inside that folder, we created a folder just for this tutorial, and named it Tutorial02. That's where we will save our content to. Ensure the file is named C underscore printing files and uses the default file type .xml. Then click Save. Let's add content to the document. Click just to the right of the short desk element in the structure view. Add the following text as our document's short description and notice that it appears in the document view. Short descriptions provide additional information to describe the topic, concept, task, or reference, but shouldn't simply repeat the title. As the name would imply, the con body element contains all of the body content for a concept. Clicking to the right of the P or paragraph element allows content to be added. Let's add a short paragraph. If you are using this video to complete the tutorial, you may want to pause the playback if you need more time. To add another paragraph, just press Enter. Then type in additional content. Next, we're going to add an unordered or bulleted list. Ensure the insertion point is still at the end of the content in the last P element. Elements are in alphabetical order, so you may need to scroll down to find the UL element. Once you have found it, double-click UL. Type in the text for the first list item as seen here. Then press Enter and type in the next item. Continue adding LI elements and their content until you have a list with these five items. You can collapse the list by clicking the minus sign to the left of the UL element. You can also change elements. For example, if you decide later on that you'd like to change an unordered list to an ordered list, click the UL element in the structure view. Then go to the Element Catalog and find the OL element. In DITA, the UL and OL represent unordered and ordered lists. Single-click the OL element to select it. Then click the Change icon from the Element Catalog toolbar. The bullets are now numbers. This is done automatically because of how the software is configured to work with DITA. Let's clean up our structure view before we add new content. Collapse the P element by once again clicking the minus sign to the left of the element. Then click immediately below the element so we can add another paragraph. Go to the element catalog and double click the P element. Then add the following content as the next paragraph. DITA tags can also add semantic markup to content. Simpler examples include bold and italic. Existing content can be wrapped into an element. To begin, select some text. Then double-click the B element in the Element Catalog to wrap the content in this new tag. The default template is configured to automatically apply a bold format. We'll make the next piece of text italic. Highlight the text. Then double-click the I element in the Element Catalog to wrap the content. Tags can also be removed while retaining the content. While the text is still highlighted, select Element from the menu. Then choose Unwrap. 
you can see that this removed the structure, and by default, the formatting is also cleared. The italics are gone, but all the text remains. Let's unwrap the B element as well. Select the B element from Structure View. The element is highlighted in both the Structure View and in the document. Now just right-click the element and select Unwrap to remove the structure and the format, but keep the content. The Change icon in the Element Catalog works for more elements than just list types. For example, select the last P element in Structure View. Then click Note in the Element Catalog. Clicking Change will turn the paragraph into a note, maintaining its content but changing the formatting. If you decide you no longer need a piece of content, select its tag. Then press Delete on your keyboard. And the element is removed entirely. Let's quickly change the ordered list back to an unordered list. To begin, expand the P element. Next, we'll click on an element to change, in this case, the OL. Once the element to change is selected, choose the element type to change to. In this example, we click UL in the element catalog. Then click Change from the toolbar. Unless a list needs to be numbered, you may want to keep it unordered and formatted as a bullet or similar list. This helps reduce any confusion by a reader between numbers seen in an ordered list and content that is numbered and part of a task. Save and close the file when you're done. There you have the basics of working with structured documents. Click the annotation to move on to Tutorial 3. In the next video, you'll create a new topic from scratch and add new content to it. All of these tutorials are also featured in our book, Adobe FrameMaker 2017, A Hands-On Guide to Creating DITA Content. For more information or to order your own copy, visit the Publishing Smarter website.